Thank you for joining us here on KEXP. We are listener-powered radio at 90.3 FM in Seattle, 92.7 FM in the Bay Area, streaming worldwide at kexp.org and also on our free mobile apps. I'm Cheryl Waters, and I am beyond excited to be down here in the KEXP studios with Camera Obscura, a band we have loved for a very long time and are so happy to see today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks very much for having us. Uh, it's such a pleasure. Look to the East, Look to the West, your first album in quite a while, and I'm very excited to hear songs from that today. You want to start with that? Sure. Uh, I think we're going to start with Liberty Print, if that's all right. Wonderful. And you're going to play some songs, and we'll chat at the end. Okay. It's Camera Obscura, live on KEXP. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's Camera Obscura live on KEXP. Okay. Next song is Dannon. <coughs> Still my heart. We're live here in the KEXB studios. It's Camera Obscura, the newest album, Look to the East, Look to the West, out on Merge Records.
sounding so great. We're live in the KEXP studios with Camera Obscura. Okay, the next song is Look to the East, Look to the West. Nicely done. That sounded absolutely beautiful. Camera Obscura live on KEXP. Thank you so much. 
my heart. Hope your hope your listeners are going to forgive me my mistakes. Uh, it I, makes it special. It does. It's the special KEXP version, <laughs> and I'm sure they didn't even notice. <laughs> look to the east. Look to the west. Oh, what a welcome, welcome <clears throat> record from you. It's been more than 10 years since your last album, and I know a lot has happened, and I was heartbroken to hear of the passing of your bandmate and dear, dear friend, Carrie Lander, in 2015. I know that was a lot for the band, and it was something you decided you couldn't go on for a while for. And Tracy Ann, I know that um, you recorded a record with Danny Coughlin in 2018, and not only did you say that you had fun doing that, but that it kind of helped you get get your confidence back. But, yeah. it, but it sounds like what really got the songwriting flowing was the Bodie Weekender. I think so. I think that was the catalyst. I mean, I think if I hadn't, if personally, if I hadn't made a record with Dan, you know, I might have sort of not got to the point of starting to write songs and contemplating writing for the band again. But I think it was the, the Bodie that got us all back in a room together and we we actually were enjoying being in a room together, weren't we? Yeah. We had a good time. We had a great time. And I think um, it was just quite a inspiring period to, you know, come together and start playing music again. And with that came uh, writing music. Um, and for our listeners who may not know, the Bodie Weekender was a cruise in 2019 with Bell and Sebastian, Teenage Fan Club, Mogwai, yeah. Yola Tango, Always and More, but yeah. very importantly, also with fans. And what did it feel like to, I, I had a friend, Janice, who was there and she was out of her mind <laughs> to see you perform live. I mean, to see how much you were missed. And yeah, I think we had a lovely time. I think there was there was a little bit of apprehension, a little bit of, you know, oh, we're going to be stuck on a boat in the middle of the med with all these people and these bands. But it was, it, it was. I don't want to sound uh, too corny, but it was really quite a beautiful experience because you just realised that there's all these people in all corners of the world that like the band and care for the band and we were able to just mingle and meet people in the lift or whilst you were in line to get some a hot dog or something. And it felt very much like a, you know, a very... Uh, like a big party or a big celebration and I think we all felt like that um, we had a really special time well it sounds like from reading interviews that everybody was a little bit shy and didn't want to be the one to speak up and say hey maybe we should make another record and no one like the label or managers wanted to put any pressure on you so who do we have to thank for getting you out on that boat and filling your hearts with joy for music and wanting to do that again um well who do we have to thank? Is it bad to see ourselves? No, I mean, that's what maybe I'm fishing for you know, here. I think that being asked to play the show, I think when you're not in the shop window, and especially when something terrible's happened, like what happened you know, to Carrie, people were very sensitive to the fact that we might not want to get back on it. And I think we were quite sensitive with each other about it. We Nobody wanted to see, to look like the person that was just getting on with it. So I think there was a lot of that, you know. Um, but I think once we were, once we were asked, we were we were really we were up for it. Well, I imagine Carrie was close to your minds and hearts when you did definitely start making yeah. the record. And Tracy Ann, I know you had a lot of trouble coming to terms with your dear friend's death, and that you've said that it affected your identity. Can you talk a little bit about that? I mean, I think the thing is that, you know, when you've been in a group for since you've been early 20s and then all of a sudden you're not doing that and you you don't necessarily have a desire to go anywhere else or do anything else you're sort of left thinking well what am I going to do who who, who am I in the world you know I was I was a mum but for a long time I was just I don't want to say just a mum it, it you know that's a that's a privilege and I enjoyed that period but when my kid got to about age six or something I started thinking right I need to I need to I need to get back out and be somebody. You worked with your wonderful band members who you're very close with, but also you worked again with Yari Hapalainen um, in the studio as a producer, and he produced Let's Get Out of This Country in My Modeling Career, so yeah. you definitely had a close relationship with him. It must have been nice to step back in 
with someone you trust and also someone who knew and loved Carrie. I think that was the point of it, really. Um, we didn't want to make... We were conscious about not making Let's Get Out of This Country, number two, or My Modern Career. You know, we, we'd made the record with Tucker Martin, Desire Lines, where we sort of stepped away back from the reverb and all of that. And I think um, for us, we... we well, for me, I don't know about other people, but I, I did sort of need my hand held a little bit and I felt that Yari was the best person for the job. We all did. He knew Kerry, he loved Kerry. Um, and we made two albums with him that are important records to us. And uh, I think he was really the only person that could have done it. And he's just got a way about him that really sort of whips us into shape. Um, he's. I don't know if anybody else wants to talk about Yari, but he's just uh, he's a, he's he's fascinating. He's he's a he's a amazing human being, and he's a great record producer. And he's a very creative person, and he's just quite inspiring. I think. Yeah. Sounds like he has opinions. I think he's he's oh, a, yeah. a driver. He p he pushes and he edits and he does things on the fly. And he, he gets bored very quickly, and he lets us know that. So it's somebody we needed somebody to have to be a bit stricter with us. Um, we just it's that having our hands held yeah, a bit, but he, still being pushed. He's kind of really cool. he's always like five steps ahead. So there's no sitting about scratching heads because sometimes we can be as a group we can be a little bit bit backwards as it coming forwards, a bit shy to jump up and get on with it. And he he sort of he, he just makes best use of the time. Tracy Ann, you've talked about in the past being a control freak in the studio and making records, but that you were able to let go this time. What did, what, you know, what was the catalyst for that and how did that feel? I mean, I don't think, any, I'm not sure that anybody else necessarily thinks I'm a control freak. Well, they might, but I think just in the past, I'm, I was maybe a bit more um, excited about trying to make records that sounded like certain records. And this time I just didn't have that. Uh, drive personally I, I wanted to write good songs but I wanted I wanted just to I don't know I wasn't really involved a lot with actually making the notes you know I, of course I wrote the songs and I had some melodies and stuff like that but when it came to making the record creating the music on the day I played very little so the sounds that we've got there's n not a lot of me there and that felt good to you? I think so, yeah. Well, Donna has joined the band, and it seems like an amazing fit. And yeah. can you talk about how she came into the fold and what she brings to Camera Obscura? Well, when we needed, when we, when we were asked to play the Boaty Weekender, we needed a keyboard player, and she was suggested to us. And um, I think just straight away, we just, we got, we all got on and we, it was just a no-brainer, really. Um, I think that period was very positive and it was a very optimistic and positive period for the group because it was a risk to have somebody new come in. It could have not gone well or, you know, we could have hired a sort of session person. But I think just how we are as a band, I think we're quite... I think we're quite warm. People were quite open to just getting on and, you know, not having a pretense or... Uh, I'm sort of, I can hear myself digressing. Somebody help me. <laughs> I think we just needed somebody that, that helped create an atmosphere that things were possible. So I think with Donna sitting in a room with her, working out pieces of music and working out parts and you know, how about try this here, how about try that there. That's not really how we did things in the past. It was always a little mm. bit more, um, we were all a bit more reticent about that. So I think there was definitely a, a sense of possibility that and arrived with Donna. A freshness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Has it been a good journey for you? Uh, wonderful. <laughs> She's not going to say otherwise, is she, right? here live on the air. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, re it really has been amazing. I've had experienced some of the most wonderful things of my life already in the f five years with this band. You know, the Boaty Weekender, I think I must have said at least 10 times on that boat, I think this is the best week of my life. And then going to Rockfield and recording the record and doing it in that sort of residential way. I really loved the fact that the band said, when we make records, we want to go and go somewhere else and stay there and all be together. That was really amazing. And then this, I've never been to America. So my mind is 
is blown every day, so every many hour. So many best weekends of your life. Yeah, yeah. Well, it makes me want to ask after so long, and especially Tracy Ann, as you were saying, that was my identity, and I stepped away from that for so long. What does it feel like to all of you to be back out on the road, touring, playing in front of a live audience? It's great. It's it's sort of it's quite surreal, but at the same time, there's something very for me. There's something very familiar about it. Getting off the bus in a city like Seattle, there's some there's something kind of familiar about it because I've done it so many times, but also. You know, there's there's things to discover, and I think turning up and knowing that you're playing to audiences that are ever changing. You know, we recognise some people, but then there's folk with their kids. There's there's a big age dynamic, and I think that's I think it's amazing. It's it's brilliant. You know, we don't take it for granted. It's you can't assume that you can come here and do a tour and that the shows are sold out. But we've had some of that, and yeah, we're lucky. It's, it's great. Must be a great feeling to have such longevity as a band and have those fans who were very young when they yeah. discovered you and now they're older and their children come now and you've got these multi-generations. They're young. They were young, just like we were. That's right. And now we're 50. Well, That's like, what they... I can't tell you what a pleasure it is to welcome you back to the KEXP studios. I hope, um, again, uh, another t many, many times in the future. Thank you very much for having us. Thank, Thank you all Thank so you. much. It's Camera Obscura live on KEXP. Look to the east, look to the west. The new record out on Merge Records. So wonderful. We can't thank you enough again for coming by today. And a big thank you to all our listeners and viewers for making sessions like this possible. KEXP is listener powered, powered by you. You can make a gift anytime in support of great music discovery at kexp.org. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll let you know every time we launch an amazing new video. Again, a big thank you to Camera Obscura live on KEXP. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.